20th century, hundreds of different kinds of animals have disappeared from the wild. This is the story of one of them. The Hawaiian Islands are famed for their beautiful, brightly colored birds. They are not so well known for the rather plain and dowdy songbirds that once filled the thick forests with blissful music. The Lanai Omau was one of six species of thrushes unique to these remote islands. It lived only on the Paradise Isle after which it was named Lanai. The sound of their bird song was once common in these dense woods. The Omaus sang all year round, their fluty calls ringing out even as they flew, darting from high perches to the forest floor. Unlike this European song thrush, the Lanai Omau was almost uniformly brown from its head across its back with a distinctively light belly and breast. It quivered its wings as it perched or changed direction in flight. The Lanai Omau grew to about 17 and a half centimeters long and fed on berries and insects which it was able to catch either in flight or by running in fluttering rushes across the ground. The naturalist G.C. Munro studied the bird from 1911 to 1923 and described how its voice could be heard almost constantly in the north and south reaches of the Lanai forest. Even the name given to the bird by the native Polynesians elevated it to almost godlike status because of its heavenly song. This was a bird that had adapted precisely to its environment, enriched by it and enriching it with music. Unfortunately, the beautiful song of the Lanai Omau was cut short when the environment began to change. The threat to the Lanai Omau was signaled when around 1825, the Oahu Omau, a close cousin from one of the neighboring islands, became extinct. The Oahu Omau was recorded for the last time by Andrew Bloxham, a naturalist aboard the British ship HMS Blonde. This same ship's journey became a symbol of how deadly even mild diseases can be to creatures with no natural immunity. HMS Blonde was sailing to Honolulu, returning the embalmed bodies of their king and queen, who had died of measles on a state visit to London. This ship was importing corpses, but meanwhile, there were many others that were importing death in other ways, by disease, for instance, or by fire. As the British and other Europeans settled the islands, they cleared the Omar's home by slash and burn. During this period of settlement, many species were lost in the flames as the trees were turned into farmland. Then people brought their livestock, and for the export trade, they grew crops that were new to the islands. As the ships came and went, they brought the final straw, wood pigeons, and night mosquitoes carrying avian malaria. As the mosquitoes sucked the Omau's blood, they infected them with the disease. They were devastated in only a few years. The building of Lanai City finished them off. In 1931, G.C. Munro walked through the same forests and could no longer hear the song of a single Omau. We will never hear the beautiful song of the Lanai Omau again. Would we let a Mozart symphony slip away so easily?